episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody, joining alongside my good friend and co-host, Tony Sapita. And we're here, obviously, we're here because what a disaster again on primetime football. Why does the NFL love to embarrass the Chicago Bears when they know that we are not good at football, when we have a horrible head coach? I, it's more of a comedy act now for the NFL than it is anything for the fans. You know, why? I, we don't get it. The Bears have been in four primetime games this season. And they went one or oh and four. They went oh and four. The Rams they lost, the Steelers they lost, the Packers they lost, and now the Vikings they lost on Monday Night Football. The Bears are also officially out of the playoffs, so you don't have to keep hearing our different scenarios in order to, for the Bears to get in. So overall, Tony and I are done. The McCaskies sell the team, get rid of everybody. We don't care anymore, Tony. Now I want you because Tony Tony was over our, our Twitter last night. Tony was texting me last night. I just want you to vent a little bit for a minute. I know that you're, you know, you're cooped up at home. You're, you're frustrated as is, but how, fr- like, just, just let it out, Tony. This is your session. We're all your friends. We're all here to listen. Just you know, let it out. Yeah. So I was added to the COVID list uh, late Sunday with uh, Jalen Johnson and uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Travis Gibson, I believe. And I just, yesterday was so infuriating and it, from a multitude of factors. So obviously Matt Nagy, you know, that's just, uh, I'm, I'm almost over that at this point, even though he does keep finding ways to mess things up, but I appreciate his passion. I, uh, I'm going to start off with, he a did bring a lot of passion. Shout out Nagy for just giving it to the ref. Cause boy, do those refs deserve it last night. Um, before we get into the refs, Roquan Smith for the e- game, even started robbed of a pro bowl. I, he's the best linebacker in football. That's we can do a whole other episode on that. Maybe we'll do a little pro bowl preview where we talk about how we're, boycotting it because Roquan Smith should be. Does anyone even watch the Pro Bowl? No, no, it's already a boy. I don't even think they had it last year because of COVID. I don't know if they're doing it this year. Who knows? It's more of an honor. It's still exactly. It's like, you know, like an all American. It's like NBA all, you know, all NBA, that kind of thing. That's how I see it at least. Jermaine Fetty fighting Tevin Jenkins over defending his quarterback. I get like the idea is hey man, we don't want penalties. But I mean Jermaine Fetty should be in the Vikings faces sticking up for his guy. First game back and you're already like, you know, going against your teammates. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. I, I actually surprisingly had a good outlook on uh, Tevin Jenkins's game, which we'll get into when we talk about the good, but that leads me into the absolute disaster clown show. That was the refereeing, the officiating last night. I mean, it, I do like to blame the refs. I was going to say, I don't like to blame the refs. I do like to blame the refs, but I try not to like go over the top and call for their heads. If it's, if it's truly something subjective or it's close, but that the one penalty uh, that I guess it was technically just the guy enforcing or uh, Scott Novak was the referee last night enforcing right. the rule where it's uh, I think it was uh, not Thomas Graham, whoever it was uh, Tabor diving at the running uh, Dalvin cook's legs, I believe it was and hitting uh, whoever was blocking for him, the tight end kind of slightly in the yeah. kneecap. So that's technically because it's like a low, it, calling it a low block. Come on. We need a better name if we're going to do that. I it's was thinking that it was the, the Dion Bush play, but no, you're right. There was the other play. That was also the Dion too. Bush play was terrible. That was terrible. It's the, football. Uh, giving Travis, Travis Gibson, the like, he like flicked the guy in the face mask and they gave him, what was it? Unsportsmanlike conduct on third down. So just in general, that, that drive, and going back even to the un, uh, the unnecessary roughness, that was a third down, extended the drive. Vikings end up scoring. The uh, the next time that the Vikings end up scoring their next scoring drive, it was the uh, the Tabor penalty penalty. That it was the Travis Gibson little flick in the face mask, whatever, for an unsportsmanlike conduct. Which, I mean, you got to know better than to like come on, man, to get off the field. You finally, you know, you're already being screwed by the refs this game. Get off the field, but still. That was a third down, extended the drive. They would have kicked like a 50-yard field goal. I mean, it was it wasn't warm last night. That you could have missed that. They ended up scoring. The defense played pretty good. The secondary. I mean, they could only hold out for so long, especially. I mean, they stopped them twice. They they got off the field twice on one drive and just got screwed. And the then defense did amazing last night. Yeah. Like everything put aside, the defense did amazing uh, last night. I'm sorry, I I know there's it's okay. more that you want to get into the refs. I mean, yeah. Uh, but like the Matt Nagy thing, like where Matt Nagy, like got in the ref's face, like that was the energy that the bears needed. Sorry. I totally stole your thunder yep. there, but Jesus, no, you're like, that's fine. what the bears needed. The final thing I was going to say was the trap. So back now to the Tevin Jenkins thing where I get, you know, he probably should have been penalized. He did push the guy, like push the guy in the face, whatever. 
but uh, it was uh, Harrison, uh, whoever it was on the Vikings, did it first. Like they were all on his face. He was just standing up for his guy talking. And then uh, I, I believe it was Harrison just absolutely face washed him. The drive after Travis Gibson got an unsportsmanlike conduct for flicking a dude in the face mask that he definitely didn't feel. It just, it just felt like a poorly officiated game is what it was. And I know we say it over and over, and that's why I don't like to say it too much because then it's then we're the guys that just blame the refs. But they screw us, man. They just keep we they got keep doing it. Night. I feel like I'm going crazy. Like maybe I'm just like like us Bears fans as, as a whole. Maybe we just don't know the rules, but I know we do. And it's just, it's infuriating. And they're just like, they're gaslighting us. That's what they're doing, Nick. They're gaslighting us. The NFL entering, is gaslighting. No, no, yeah, they are. No, they are. Because entering, I believe it was the middle of the third quarter, they showed the penalty yards between like the Vikings and the Bears. Vikings had like three penalties. I think it was for 15 yards or something. And the Bears had nine penalties, I think for 90 yards at that point. It Like, how is that? Okay, like Roger Goodell could be like, okay, what is really going on here? Like, why are the Bears getting so screwed out of things? You know, I know you got one more thing you want to go over nope. in your vent. But, go for it. Uh, go for it. No, no, no. That that I mean, like that's it. I'm I'm frustrated with the next thing that you want to talk about too, and that's drops. I mean, it's just unacceptable. It's the Damian Bird, the or Demir Bird drop. Oh my God! That, I was like, why, why, why now? Is is your opportunity? You, you're on a one-year contract. You've already made your money. Like, come on, Jesus. Good Lord. He had another one, too. Like, there was obviously the big one at the end, but he had another right. one. I think it was, like, second, third down, whatever it was. But it we're finally running these, like, kind of good plays where I think it was a crossing route or it was a little out, whatever it was. But, you know, we have a quarterback that can hit the guy on the sideline, you know, kind of use the sideline as an extra um, – defender is not the right word, but basically, like, okay, he, the only guy that can get to it is our receiver, which is – Never happened in the history of Bears quarterbacks. And I mean, he just, he went up and he just flailed at it. He just like, it's like he put two hands out trying to block the ball from getting to him. It was the, I just, it just sucks, man. Jimmy Graham dropped that touchdown. Like it just right. There was decent defense on him, but he should have caught it. There was, there was, but I, yeah, it still hit him right in the hands at the same time. There, the Cole Komet, there was a Cole Komet drop that I don't think was a drop. I'll give him that. That was also in the end zone. I believe it was Cole Komet. And that was one where the guy got a hand in there. It was just good. You know, defense gets paid too. So I, here's a question for you, Tony, before we go okay. into my venting session. <sighs> yeah. Is, I, know, I know you hate it when I do this, but is Cole Komet a bust? Uh, he kind of stinks. I, I don't think he's a bust. I think he'll be fine if we can get a better coach in there maybe and he can work with fields more than just like four random weeks throughout the year. But I mean, it's... It's getting tough. He keep, It's getting it's tough the, to defend him. It's a fact. Uh, dude, these are just right, right in the breadbasket. I mean, they're just hit him right in the hands. That's the worst part. Chicago kid, tough. Chicago kid from Notre Barrington, Dame product. High, Notre Dame product. Like, it's, yep. you know, uh, the fan base is still behind him, but like people are starting to go like, okay, we did this for Mitch. We did this for a bunch of other people where we just kept defending, defending. And there's got to be a cutoff. I'm, I was, I'm not saying he's a bust yet. I think that he has a, big future ahead of him if he gets the right head coach but if he gets a new head coach and plays like this sorry. next year i think as long as we as long as we do properly clean house we get it we get a new coaching staff in, we get hopefully a new gm which i know we'll talk about in a minute uh but i think that's kind of everyone's got to be good next year or if you're not good you're gone it, it's kind of just like a hey you know covid naggy it all happened we get it you know everyone you get one more year kind of and if we can't figure it out from there, then I, not everyone, not everyone. And we, and I'm going to go into a little, <laughs> well, I'm going to go into a little bit exactly who's under contract. That's going to attract yeah. a good GM, but here's my vent session. And you know, everyone bear with me. They, everyone knows I'm kind of crazy. I am tired as a bears fan of the eight year gap. And I'll call it that. What the eight year gap is, is that the bears are good for two, three years, you know, or two out of three years. And then there's an eight year gap where they just keep duct taping a team together where there's talent there, but you know, they could either be really good or they're going to be bad. And I'm tired of the bears being in this and I'm 24 years old. And now I've seen this three times and I'm sick of it. I'm done. I don't know how my dad does it. Who, you know, he's been a bears fan for a super long time. Not calling him old. Sorry, dad, not calling you old. 
I'm just saying you've seen this more times than me. And I, there's a lot more Bears fans that have seen this time and time again. And it is legitimately always an eight-year gap. Is the NFL rigged and they always make the Bears good every eight years? I don't know. It could be rigged. It's, you know, Betty Cunningham coming out saying the NFL's rigged. But anyway, the, I'm Allegedly just a joke. So- so. Alleged, eh, I, I believe that. I, you know, come on, like they're just yeah, the NFL involved. definitely just made him say it. I completely. Well, agree I with look. You. I mean, look at the refs. But like, I, I couldn't agree tired. more. Sorry, keep going. I am tired of the eight-year gap. I am tired of always duct taping a team together. Put a contender out there and make it happen. Twenty eighteen was a contender. It's been duct taped since. You know, twenty ten was a contender. Was duct taped a few years after that. Two thousand six Super Bowl. A lot of questionable calls in the Super Bowl. Tony Dungy, Peyton Manning, whatever. But it was a duct tape team. 2005, 2006, then you're not good for a couple of years. Okay? Like, I am done with it. I am done. The McCaskies need to either sell the team or George needs to legitimately sit down with himself and go, I need to clean this house. I need to get everyone brand new, hire the best of the best, spend the money. You make a billion more every year, George. Like, come on. Virginia doesn't care. Everyone's like, oh, she's frustrated. She's been frustrated forever because she might not get her apple juice or she might have done something else. I don't know. But she's 98 years old. And she doesn't care anymore. It's George. You're in charge. This is your team. All right. But back to last night. That's just where I wanted to vent on real fast. Back to last night. Hot mic. The fact that Matt Nagy was the play caller. And I know Bill Lazor was out with COVID and I hope he's doing a lot better. I, obviously, Tony, you know, you and him pro- might have been hanging out talking about plays or something and, you know, at the doodle in Barrington or whatever. But, but Matt Nagy probably jumped for joy up and down in his office at Hallis Hall when he found out that Bill Lazor was out. He's probably like, nope, nope, I'm doing it all. Because he's been doing it all the whole time. Bill lazer has been a smokescreen for this whole thing. You know, that's just one thing that frustrates me. And he admitted it last night that he was a play caller. Finally, he admitted it. He didn't admit it before the game. You're not tricking anyone, Matt. We all know who is. You know, I'm calling him Matt. I'm not calling him Nagy anymore. I'm calling him Matt because I'm disappointed, Matthew. The attitude of the offense versus the defense is also what really frustrated me. Sean Desai coming back from COVID, fresh off COVID, probably still tired, might have the COVID fog brain, you know, that Tony, you tell me that it's a symptom that you have. You know, the offense may have had 370 yards of offense, which is great. You know, awesome. You, you did it. But you were against one of the worst defenses in the NFL. 285 of that being Justin Fields passing great. You know, get the kid almost 300 yards. But you enter the red zone, there's nothing. There was no momentum on the offense. Tony, you talked about drops, penalties, challenges, never making something happen. Cairo Santos kicking a field goal, two field goals, missing one of them because one of them was blocked. And then you score at the last second, which Jasper, Jasper Horstead, by the way, has more touchdowns than Cole Komet, by the way, in the NFL. You know, just want to throw that out there. I, I, hot mic right now. I, I, I'm just done with this team. The defense held the high-powered Minnesota offense to 193 yards, 63 of them being Kirk or 74 passing, but 63 of those yards being Kirk Cousins. So you're going to tell me that the guy, the num- in the top five highest passing yards in the NFL is held to 74 yards. And you can't as an offense back up your defense against a secondary. That's all second stringers. Completely unacceptable. They ma- the defense made the game fun, but of course we couldn't pull it off. And finally, how is Matt Nagy still employed? How? As we record this episode, Matt Nagy is still in uh, Tony, you could check if you want, because I got a few points I want to bring up. Matt Nagy has lost eight of his last nine games, that only win coming against the Detroit Lions in the final seconds on Thanksgiving. The Lions now have won two games in a row, one of them being against the Arizona Cardinals, who the Bears got spanked by. And now he left Thomas Graham Jr., who went from practice squad to starter in a day, who had a 90.7 PPF rating, three pass breakups, 10 yards allowed against him, and one pass, um, another pass deflection. How is he not in all season? How do you not see the talent there? I'm it's done. crazy because they draft, they, you know, obviously they drafted him for a reason. Like I was, I was kind of excited. I thought I, I watched him play a little bit. I, I like Oregon kind of. Um, so I watched him play a little bit. And it was always kind of just like, yeah, sure, throw him in. It's not like we had if we had Kyle Fuller and you know Jalen Johnson, so I'd understand not, you know, not give him a chance. He's the young guy. I get it. There was no reason he shouldn't have been but out London there. London and year. I, London and I were saying that for months. We're like, why is this guy not playing? This guy is talented, and you know, you know, London and I are just laughing to the bank now. You know, it's just yeah. it, it is what it is. We said Thomas Graham Jr. is the answer for CB two, and guess what? He he proved it last night against Kirk Cousins in the Minnesota 
Minnesota Vikings. So let me cool off my mic a little bit. I, I know that everyone's going to go, whoa, whoa, relax, relax. Let's go to the good that came out of last night. Mm-hmm. With the Bears now out of playoff contention, with the new NFL rule, the Chicago Bears can now begin searching for their next head coach. Matt Nagy's done in Chicago. He's done. Four and 10, you're done, buddy. I'm sorry. Coach of the year three years ago, you're done. Get out of here. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back. Thomas Graham Jr., I know we just talked about it. If he can play like he did last night the rest of the season, it could be a strong nickel corner coming up for the Chicago Bears for next season, saving the Bears a draft pick because obviously they traded away their first-round pick for Justin Fields and a sixth-round pick away for Jakeem Grant. So that saves the Bears a cornerback pick, a DB pick, which is great. Robert Quinn and Jakeem, Robert Quinn and Jakeem Grant are both Pro Bowlers. Yes, Jakeem Grant did exit yesterday's game in concussion protocol. Hopefully he's okay. We'll have more on that. But Quinn is closing in on Richard Dent's single season Chicago Bears record franchise record of 17 and a half sacks. Quinn had two sacks last night, making him now have 16 sacks with three games remaining. Grant, again, also another good thing. I, I said it before, was only traded for a six round pick. Could be a Chicago Bear next year. Brings back that Devin Hester vibe. Keep him. I don't care. Tony, quick comments about the good from last night. Yeah. Uh, so I got a couple of things. First, the Jakeem Grant thing and the Devin Hester vibes. You remember that one play, uh, that return he had where he just ran all over the field. I think he just ended up losing like two Yeah, yards. last night he just kept I was going totally around. fine with it. I don't know about yes, you, but I it was fun. Maybe something happened. Screw it. I Why not? You know, why not? <laughs> he's a guy. He's one of the guys. It seems to be he's getting to that point, at least, where it's like, you know what? If you're going to lose a couple of yards, that's fine. If you because you have that potential to make that big explosive play. That's my take. Uh, so second thing is. I just want to say I love how much the defense absolutely hate like the entire like led by Akeem Hicks and Roquan absolutely hates Dalvin Cook and Kirk Cousins too. Yes, but they, I think Dalvin Cook like banged someone's girlfriend, dude. Like it is, it is so <laughs> personal. It is so personal. Akeem Hicks hates him so much, and I love I love every second of it. He's arguably one of the best running backs in the league. We hit him so hard. Every time he touched the ball, five guys gang tackle. He was getting guys. popped by like Kendall Vildor and it like Thomas Graham Jr. And Roquan <laughs> Smith also showed oh. no mercy. Absolutely, oh, he was no standing mercy. him up like at the goal, at, not even at the goal, at like the first down marker, at like at like the fifty-two or the fifty-two, geez, uh, at the forty-two yard line, just standing him up and like in the middle of the. Oh, it was incredible. I love that. Uh, Justin Fields. I so my official take is that I still think he progressed. I think it was. He took some terrible sacks, but he, I think he learned by the end of the game not to take those sacks. I don't know. We'll see about that. Uh, yeah, quick like little... the, the, the throw where he like faked through it and then just held up. I'm like, what are you doing? Just the... get rid of it. What, it's a rookie what... mistake. Rookie mistake. Yeah, what I think kind of went on there is he feels that with this offense, especially with everyone out, and what, kind of rightfully so, but I think he – I think it's also a bad mindset that hopefully he can get out of his head. I think he feels like he, he has to make all the plays. It has to be him. And that kind of, it eventually just, you know, takes a little too long. So I think that's what that was there, but here's my, uh, my one stat I wanted to share with everyone here. And then we'll move on to my last thing among quarterbacks with a hundred attempts, Justin field, Justin fields now ranks fifth in big time throw rate at 6.3%, which is uh, getting it in a tight window and throwing it far downfield or something like that. It's kind of a weird stat, but it's still good. And first in percentage of passes thrown beyond the first down marker at 47.4% uh, that we're not used to that as Bears fans. Uh, Jenkins, I think, progressed. I really do think he did. Um, I th- He was just better. There's some stats I can't find to back it up. The final, final thing is Matt Nagy sucks. Uh, <laughs> ah, you know what? I'll save that for another time because that's – well, this is positive vibes now. We're in positive. Positive. Vibes. We're positive vibes now. So, Tony, now what? 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 What do you? What do you? I know you have one comment for the now what for the Chicago Bears, but yeah. what is it? Uh, so, I whether it's uh new quarterback or uh, not new quarterback, not new quarterback, new head coach. Sorry, COVID brain here, everyone. New head coach, new GM. Uh, Leslie Frazier, Brian Leftwich, or Byron Leftwich, Byron, Byron, Brian. I don't know. Bri- well, Brian. I'll have to learn it eventually. Maybe who knows? Uh, or Kellen Moore, and then Will uh, Will McClay. I, I'd like that Kellen Moore, Will McClay, uh, head coach, GM setup. But I mean, that's just you know we got to hire a search firm. We got to we got to do this right. That's what we got to do. We got to fire Nagy now so that we can take advantage of these next what is it three weeks? Yes. Before yes. the Raiders and the Jaguars get their chance, get their hooks into someone. Florida has no state income tax. 
that's a selling point. They have Trevor Lawrence. That's a selling point. You, they're going to get probably the number one <laughs> I pick, I think. That, they? Yeah. I think yeah. they're going to get the number one pick, right? That's the selling point. And then the Raiders, you're all Las Vegas. That's a pretty good selling point. <laughs> I'm gonna, and, and they're not a bad team. Like we have to jump now. We have to. I agree. I agree. So I know what you're saying. Let the head coaching search begin. Go back to our last episode <laughs> where we see who we kind of want to be the Chicago Bears head coach. One more comment I want to make before we close out is that next season, the Bears have the following under contract. Justin Fields, David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert, Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, Tevin Jenkins, Larry Borum, Cody Whitehair, Roquan Smith, Jalen Johnson, Thomas Graham Jr., Cairo Santos, Robert Quinn, and Khalil Mack. I have asterisks next to them because those guys have the biggest contracts and can get moved, but they are strong veteran presence. Obviously, after Robert Quinn's current season, you got to keep him. And then if you have Khalil Mack come back, just imagine. Just imagine. But in my opinion, that is a solid building block for any general manager to come and hire a strong head coach along with draft and bringing some free agents. The Bears are going to have a boatload of money next offseason. So there are brighter days ahead for the Chicago Bears coming up. Stay, just hold it together, Bears fans. You could be done now, but the second it becomes January 3rd, after the Bears are just, the season's over, things are going to start looking brighter. So, It is 12.06 p.m. on uh, December 21st, 2021, and Matt Nagy is still not fired. What are we doing? I honestly thought you were about to say he was fired and be like, wow, we got to record this whole No, that'd be sweet, but he's not, so. Yeah, Yeah. well, he still is employed, so stay tuned for that. But with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody, joined alongside my good friend and co-host, Tony Cepeda. We'll see you guys next time. (laughs) 